So I absolutely loved Fast X. I mean, this franchise is just absolutely incredible. I just love the fact that it's a true popcorn blockbuster movie and you kind of can't not enjoy it. And I mean, this film in particular is the eighth highest costing movie ever. And you really can tell as everything just looks so larger than life. I mean, it is knowingly really ridiculous, but you just love it for it as it just looks so cinematic, so spectacular. And like I said, you can't not enjoy it as it's just such a brilliant film with a truly stellar A-list cast that's going all over the world in these brilliant chase sequences, brilliant explosive sequences. Everything about this movie is literally what you go into the cinema complex for. So it's just so, so good. And from a storyline perspective, I absolutely love it when movies and TV shows retell something that you know is true, but just from a completely different perspective so that you do get a different perspective. And Fast and the Furious 5 is arguably one of the best ones in the entire franchise. So I think it was really good that they went back into this one so that they can also feature Paul Walker, which I thought was absolutely brilliant. And you really do find out a lot more about the burning motivation of the main lead villain played incredibly well by Jason Momoa, who just really brings Dante to life and you really can feel all of his dark, evil energy. And I think Charlize Theron was absolutely correct when right at the beginning of this movie, she was describing him as the devil, as he really does have that energy in terms of his really unpredictable and is a bit of a loose cannon, quite literally, and could just do all this evil stuff, but at the same time really is the puppet master as he is able to control everything and everything really, even though the characters don't realize it, is going exactly as his master plan wants it to and has such a jokey energy about himself in which he doesn't even take things too seriously, which makes him even more threatening, ironically. And on that point, speaking of jokey attributes, he really does remind me a lot of the Joker and his yin to his yang Batman, as Dom and Dante are just such an epic rivalry in the making, as these characters really are the opposite, especially as Dante believes that, you know, Dom took away his family and his fortune, so is now masterminding his entire plan to do the same for Dominic, and just seeing it playing out successfully from Dante's perspective, like I said, is just so mind-blowing. So you have these real human-driven motivations, as well as all of the eccentricities taking place, not only from this character's perspective, but also, like I said, all of the larger-than-life things taking place. And this movie's scale was absolutely massive. And they have said that, you know, because of the fact that it's a two-part epic finale, apparently the next part is going to be truly gigantic. And Vin Diesel has gone on the record to say that actually it's not going to be a two-part finale, but it's going to be a three-part finale. So I just can't imagine that the fact that they can even go bigger a second time and then a third time. I just can't wait to see what on earth Fast of the Furious is going to do next. But it wasn't all that shining roses taking place in the beginning, as in the early days, Vin Diesel epically fell out with the previous director, Justin Lin, who said, you know, this movie just isn't worth my mental health as not only was he constantly clashing with Vin Diesel, who was also apparently really late, was forgetting his lines, was getting a little bit out of shape as well, but also just the pressure of everything that he needed to achieve with this movie. He just thought, you know what, this is just not worth it. So then he left, but it kind of all worked out as the new director really did bring his flavor whilst retaining all of the storyboards and the plans that Justin Lin had originally. And like I said, I think the end product actually is better for it. And just the mega ensemble cast in this movie, you just can't not enjoy it. Like I keep saying, it's just so brilliant. Just wicked seeing all of these mega A-listers just appearing as the movie goes on, which was absolutely wicked. I mean, I would have loved them to have a little bit more to do. For example, Charlize Theron, Brie Larson, even though their scenes were really, really good. I just would have loved a little bit more from them. But then we have to talk about the cameos right at the end of this movie. So we've got Gal Gadot and Dwayne Johnson back. Honestly, this is just so, so, so exciting. I literally can't wait to see what these epic characters are going to do in the next movie. And apparently Keanu Reeves and Robert Downey Jr. are also being eyed for the next couple of installments. So like I said, this movie just has the potential to be absolutely incredible. So not only was this movie really, really nostalgic because it was bringing back all of these epic players, but it was also bringing back what we loved from the original entries, for example, Street Racing, taking place back in Brazil, where you can also bring other characters back from that era. So it was just coming together so well, whilst also celebrating everything that has gone on before. And I absolutely love the blend of it feeling really, really massive, whilst also having true human, emotionally driven storylines. So you really can feel not only part of the massive action, 
but also part of these intrinsic characters, which is so, so good. And then, like I said before, it does have all of the over-the-top, far-fetched nature of everything that you do come to love about the Fast and the Furious franchise, but it knowingly is pretty self-aware at the same time. And I think all of those meta jokes just really add to everything. So my viewing experience personally was just absolutely incredible. And I just love the fact that you are traveling the world with all of these different characters and just all of the camera work that took place in all of these incredible locations just came together so well. And it was just so adrenaline fueled, quite literally, especially when you have Dante in the background, like I said, masterminding everything. And just like I said before, all of the camera angles, just everything worked together to make this masterpiece just come together so well. And even though it is a little bit ridiculous, you just enjoy it for it. And as we're at the end of the franchise, they are able to kill off certain characters. So literally the stakes are so high. As nobody is off the table, I do think that Vin Diesel's Dominic son's character is obviously going to survive. And I think the franchise is then going to be passed on to him. The baton is going to be given to him from Vin Diesel's Dominic character to this guy. And maybe right at the end of the second or the third part, they're going to age him up a little bit like they have done in WandaVision with Wanda's children. And then the franchise can literally be continued with new fresh talent whilst also being able to bring in these older characters as they can then become mentors to the next group. But 2025 literally can't come soon enough as I just need to get the next installment as Fast and the Furious 10 was just so wicked. I can't wait to see what even bigger and better talent they are going to introduce in the next film. It's just going to be so good. I hope there's even more twists and turns and a lot more fun to be had. I just can't wait for the next installment. But as far as Fast 10 is concerned, this movie was absolutely incredible. And so for all of those reasons, I have to give it a mega 7.5 out of 10. Now I'd love to hear what you thought of Fast X, so please let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And I look forward to seeing you in my next video.